tough questions, new insights, diverse perspectives. Welcome to Questions of the Day with Fanuel Muindi. Welcome back. Now, the 2023 Berlin Science Festival just wrapped up a few weeks ago. And under the motto, Dare to Know, Creative Science, Precise Art, they hosted another edition of Art and Science Forum, where they highlighted the fruitful interaction. This is what they say on the website. Fruitful interaction between artistic practice and scientific rigor. Over 10 days, over 11,000 people attended the event and joined the conversations. And they came, and as they say, quote, to get inspired by science slams, concert, experimental, multisensorial performances, or temporary ex, uh, exhibitions. Now, one of those events was the art in dialogue with 100 years of tropical science. This was a virtual panel and included participants in the art and science residency to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute research station, Barro Colorado Island, which is the site of the longest ongoing conversation of tropical science in the world. Now, our very own special correspondent, Victoria Gonzalez, talked with artist, facilitator, and founder slash director of a studio Uboso, Ella Spaulding. What I found this conversation so intriguing is her exploration of that connection between artists and scientists. To go beyond artists illustrating or capturing what scientists are doing, but to bring them together and, and explore the co-production of new knowledge, of new conversations. Here's part of that conversation. Art and Ecology platform called the Studio Nuoso hosted Art in Dialogue with 100 Years of Tropical Science at this year's 8th edition of the Berlin Science Week. The dialogue was centered around the 100th anniversary of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute research station that is called Barro Colorado Island. Uh, it's turning 100 years this year and this station was built around the, the time, well, it was because of the construction of the Panama Canal that this island, this artificial island was created when they flooded a whole forest an end community area um, and this island resulted. And then uh, scientists just found that a lot of biodiversity went to this island and it became a research station which eventually has spread out to the whole country. So it's not just around the canal watershed. Um, but in effect, what despite this colonial history, it has resulted in being the longest ongoing conversation on scientific research around the tropics in the world. Um, and so the conversation itself was revolving around an art and science residency that we were invited to do at Estudio Nuoso, which is my art and ecology platform in Panama. Um, and we invited three artists to engage with three scientists that are doing long-term research on the island. That means that they often either have engaged in research that is in their into it for the long run, or that they are building upon existing research that has already been taken on by previous generations of scientists, let's say. Um, so that that. The other research is around mycology and pathogens and fungi that actually control forest tree population and uh, the effects of heat and climate change on tropical forests and trees. Um, and we wanted to share about this art and, art and science residency, but in the context of what is the role that art and science collaborations can play in promoting greater awareness and care for the tropics on a global scale and perceiving the tropics as part of the interconnectedness um, and the care that we need to have of all ecosystems, but particularly why the tropics are so important. As an artist, facilitator, founder, and director of Studio Nuoso, Ella Spalding reflected on the connection between art and science that was formed through this collaboration. Art is also a form of research, and that 
it can be beneficial it made as a mutual mutually beneficial relationship in between the artists and the scientists when these collaborations come and that is our approach as facilitators of these residencies it's not intended that the artists can merely illustrate what the scientists are conveying but actually that they are engaged in the questions and in the conversations together and i think you do it does come across in the conversation because the scientists also got a lot out of the reflections that the artists were having in that time of that exchange also having to work through explaining research to somebody else makes you go back into certain aspects of the research that you take for granted when you're way ahead in your research process and so i think for them it was really nice to be able to be on the island talking about their research engaging with the artists who are so connected to their sense of wonder and curiosity um so that kind of creates a reinspiration process on a community scale this research ignites networks and bridges of solidarity to explore the tropics role in the overall health of the planet the residency was two long weekends on the island and then a lot of time independent of independent work and there was an exhibition about the 100th anniversary of CCI in Washington in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington DC which was then brought to Panama to the Panama Canal Museum in Panama City and expanded and part of that expansion of the exhibition was to include the result of these arts artworks that were generated during the residency and so those were accompanied also by public program that engaged school students of various different schools um the artworks were intended to convey the experience of being in that forest that has been studied for 100 years and so i think that did a lot of impact and outreach within the context of this museum that is already quite visited by locals Astulio Nuoso looks forward to celebrating their 10th year anniversary Spalding is already planning for what's ahead in the future of their work Ultimately what I'm looking to create is a nature culture corridor to work along biological corridors to look at scientists that are already working in densely biodiverse places and support them in their research to look at all like to really see what lines of possible collaboration and solidarity can be created between institutions across different ecosystems and across the world and how we can harness the potential that is there to raise awareness to be part of this movement to create a shift of perception and relationship with the natural world from domination and separation to reciprocity and care and a reflection like in the sense of like we're we're reflecting but in the sense also that nature is a reflection of us or our environments are a reflection of us and that yeah there's just a lot of work that we know that needs to happen and can happen i think so we will have this 10 year anniversary exhibition next year in august at the contemporary art museum in panama and like i said i am trying to build this nature culture corridor across borders across continents thinking along the lines of biological corridors but also lines of migration currents and ocean currents and air currents as a strategy as a very concrete strategy to defend those places like um and so anyone who's interested in being part of that I'm happy to connect. Many thanks to Victoria Gonzalez for that report. Now, what I alluded to earlier was this question around the connections between artists and scientists. And there's a lot of work taking place in this domain and we look forward to exploring these connections as they continue to evolve. Till next time.